I'm Dr. Jeff Thompson. I'm a physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist, and I work a lot with patients with fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a syndrome, which means it isn't a specific disease process. There isn't any underlying pathology that you can find, and because of that, often these patients are uh, told this is all in their head. But it, but it isn't. This is a real thing. It's a real, you know, patients really have suffering with this. Uh, and that, that set of symptoms that patients have uh, are widespread pain, widespread tenderness, usually poor sleep, fatigue, exercise intolerance, and that group of symptoms is what, we, w w is, what is called fibromyalgia. It tends to run in families to some extent, so there's probably a genetic component, which we're finding is true with a lot of things these days. Um, it seems to follow some sort of stress to the system, uh, whether a, a viral illness or a, um, a, a surgery that uh, lays somebody low or a car accident or a hospitalization, something that is a stressor to the system. Uh, and then for some people, probably genetically determined, they don't bounce back from that like everyone else would. And so they, they continue to have the aching all over and, uh, and, and it kind of progresses from there to more widespread pain and, and tenderness and poor sleep and it, you get kind of on this downward spiral and it makes it hard to spiral the other direction. Sure. There's a huge um, spectrum of, of how people are affected with fibromyalgia. And so for some people, uh, it's, it's an annoyance, they have some pain and they're tender, uh, but it doesn't really interrupt their life and it goes all the way to people whose lives are totally on hold because of the dysfunction that this is causing. Um, you know, the, the deconditioning and, and things hurt, they had, you know, they're not sure if they're doing something wrong when they, when they try to exercise because it hurts when they do and so they shut everything down and their whole life is on hold because of this. And so there is a, is a broad spectrum. It seems to be uh, that there are three main avenues to help these patients. And uh, the, the ones I, I focus on are, are sleep. Almost everybody with this set of symptoms has what we call non-restorative sleep. They wake up not refreshed, like they didn't even sleep, even if they were asleep during the night. So addressing that is a key thing. It's very hard for widespread muscle pain things to get better if you're not getting good sleep. So that's one thing. Not necessarily with medications. There's, there's cognitive behavioral approaches to improve sleep. And uh, so th that's one of the things that is, is necessary. Now there may be other reasons for not getting good sleep, sleep apnea or restless leg syndrome or periodic movements of sleep. Those sorts of things need to be looked for to make sure that that's not what's causing the poor sleep. But often there isn't any real uh, obvious reason, just they have non-restorative sleep. So fixing that is key. The second thing is exercise and dealing with the muscles themselves. Relaxation, stretching, getting in an aerobic fitness kind of program, starting real low, going slow with it. Um, and that's, that's probably the most important thing that people can do to treat this and, and has been researched widely. Uh, it seem, seems to be the most effective thing is getting that exercise going, getting the muscles uh, working better, more efficient, um, having more endurance and so on. And that helps with sleep, and it helps with pain, and, and, and uh, it helps with your general function. Then the third one is the psychological side of things. Now, most people that come to our program uh, with a diagnosis of fibromyalgia have had it for a while, or they've, they've been to a lot of different docs, and there's been at least one that's probably said it's all in your head. This is your, you know, your little, you know, it's, it's a problem of psychology, and it really isn't. But yet, if you ignore the psychological side of things, it's hard for things to get better. So uh, it's not caused by stress, but stress usually makes it worse, just like stress makes a lot of things worse. So if you're not dealing with stress management, or if you've got depression, if that's not well treated, or if you've got some of the symptoms, maybe not full-blown clinical depression, those things need to be well treated for you to make progress with the pain. Since it's a, a set of symptoms, it's really uh, diagnosed by looking at, at that set of symptoms. So the typical story, you know, someone who hurts all over and they're tender in a lot of places. There used to be a lot of emphasis on specific tender points. There's less emphasis on that now. Usually a lot of other symptoms that go with it, with the fatigue and uh, poor sleep and, uh, and in general, a lot of sensitivity. Part of this 
uh, as with any pain that's been going on a long time, is what we call central sensitization. So the central nervous system gets kind of sensitized, so that's where the tenderness comes from, but often people have uh, sensitivity to bright lights and, and loud noises and things. So that constellation of symptoms is really what makes the diagnosis, along with making sure there's not something else going on. Uh, it, it turns out there's not very many things that can cause widespread pain and tenderness. If it's a disease of muscle, that's easy to rule out with a, a simple blood test. Uh, if it's a nerve disease, there, there'd be other things you'd find on exam. Uh, you know, so, so it's really fairly simple to rule out the other bad things that it could be. Um, and, and then you're left with it's this set of symptoms and this is what we call fibromyalgia. There have been some studies that looked at uh, people before and after getting a real diagnosis, you know, having a name put on it. And, and initially, docs were afraid that, well, if they have a label for it, then they'll get into the sick role and all that. But it's really the opposite. Once you, uh, often when, once you have a, a known thing that you can fight, you have a direction to go, and actually number of doctor visits and expenses for uh, you know, medicines and so on have gone down after they get a, a diagnosis. And I think, just like anything, if you're not sure what you're dealing with, you've been to a lot of different physicians, they've told you different things that it's not, uh, but never give you any good way to go after it, you know, it, it's, it's hard to uh, feel like you've got a, a good direction. And so once you get the diagnosis, um, it doesn't mean it goes away. It's still a hard thing to manage, but it's something you can manage. And, it, and it's not something that leads to uh, disability. It doesn't necessarily lead to, you know, there isn't any destruction of joints or destruction of tissues. Uh, so, you know, the, the structure remains good and it's more the function of that structure that we need to work on and that's that's doable doesn't mean that uh, people haven't had dysfunction to a level that they're not able to do things but it doesn't but it's not a permanent disabling kind of uh, disease I think it's important for people to to realize that this is something if they've got this set of symptoms it doesn't mean like that uh, well, I've got this and so therefore I can't function. I think they have to realize that um, they've got control and it's up to them to really get going on getting it better. Um, no one can fix them, but yet uh, progress can be made. It's not easy. It may be always the case that you have some achiness and so on, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your, your function is limited.